everyone. Revive everyone. And give us understanding. Enlighten us. And make us become better. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church of God say a better amen. It's not louder enough. A louder amen. A resounding amen. Can you greet somebody beside you and say you are welcome to church? If the person is not responding, it's the wrong person you are greeting. Is the person smiling at you? Glory to God. God bless you. You can take your seats. Amen. Good morning, everybody. You are blessed forever in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate our daddy for the privilege and the opportunity. Can we celebrate our father in the Lord this morning? Thank you for the trust that you have bestowed on me and for sharing this um, exalted altar with me this morning. I pray that I will fly on your anointing to be a blessing to the church in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate the pastorate, the resident pastor, and we pray that the Lord bless your day of wedding. In the name of Jesus, um, Pastor Dami and uh, Mrs. Dami, <laughs> Pastor Mrs. Dami, I celebrate you. Thank you for inviting me. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Can you respond to me? I said hallelujah. Say I am blessed to be here this morning. Tell the person beside you that I am blessed to be here this morning. What about you? Ask the person that what about you? What did the person say? We are blessed. We are blessed people. Our blessings are not based on physical things. Our blessings are spiritual. And it is the spiritual that produces the physical. So we are blessed forever. Say, I am blessed forever. Blessed forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Dami, thank you very much. I will not like that. I celebrate you. It's not a sin to not play music when a pastor is preaching. And it's not a sin when you are playing music too. So it just depends on the minister. Hallelujah. When I need it, I may call for it. Hallelujah. Now, can you hear me, everybody? Yes. Even your faces are more scary this morning. Now, smile to me, smile to me, smile to me. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. We are looking at overflow. And that's why I put on a badda that shows overflow. Yes. Glory to God. <laughs> ah, glory to God. We are destined to have overflow. We need to understand this. We are destined to have overflow. And when I say we are destined to have overflow, I am talking to believers in the house. Believers are destined to have overflow. Because what the believer has <laughs> is not small. What we boast about is not a small thing. What we have as believer is great. And that is why the Bible says that we have exceedingly great and precious promises. And so what makes us what or who we have today is as a result of what is in us. What divines us is not physical. What divines us is inside us. Now, unbelievers can divine themselves by physical things they possess. But your definition 
is not based on the clothes you wear, on the car you ride, on the house you have built, where you are working. No. Your definition is from the inside. Because the workings of God are from inside. God does not work from outside to the inside. God works from inside to the outside. And so when we got born again, that's why Jesus did not decide to stay by our side. He decided to enter us. Are we together? Because we don't live by external things. We live by what is inside us. What is pushing us? How we are living? We are living by that which lives in us. So, my leading is not on what I see. Are you following what I'm saying now? My leading is not what, sir? What I can see. My leading is what I am seeing in me. Are you following what I'm saying now? So, I am talking to believers. This message is for believers. It's not for home believer. I'm deceiving you. If I come here and I say, everybody, you will have overflow. Unbelievers can never have overflow because they don't understand what it means to have water overflow. They don't understand. Whatever you are seeing around unbeliever that you think they have that is called overflow is downward flow. Did you get what I've just said now? But our overflow is upward flow. It's not downward flow. So whatever belie unbeliever is celebrating today does not last. But we have what is last. We have what is eternal. We have what is everlasting. Are we together? So you have to understand that you have an overflow. What gave me this assurance? The scripture says that devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he says, I have come. Have you read that place in the scripture before? Have you heard that place before? Are you with me this morning? He said, I have come. That you might what, sir? I'm not, I'm not hearing you. Are you responding to me? That you might have what, sir? It's just ordinary life. What do you call it, sir? Abundant life. Abundantly. That life is life abundantly. It's not just ordinary life. What God is doing, God does it in excess. And that excess is not wastage. You didn't get what I've just said now. What you have in the physical, you may have it in excess and call it a waste. What God calls excess is not a waste, it's a blessing. Are we together? So that excess of God is for you to make extra impact. So you have to know the reason for this overflow. That overflow is not about yourself. Because when God got you saved, God was not just thinking about you alone. God was thinking about people that are attached to you, destinies that are attached to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? God was thinking about lives that will be affected positively through you. So whatever he does for you, he does it in excess so that you can use that excess to bless lives. So the essence of overflow is not wastage. The essence of overflow is to bless. Are you with me, sir? So that's why, sir, it's a crime as a believer if you are not a blessing to others. Say to yourself that it's a crime. I am a criminal. If you are not blessing lives, you didn't get what I've just said. You are a criminal, holy ne? Eh? You are a criminal. You don't, you don't understand. It, you, what you are committing, you are limiting your father. 
if everything you are doing is thinking about yourself. So the essence of overflow is not about you alone. So you have to think outside the bus. Are you following what I'm saying this morning? Is a criminal offense if you are not a blessing. If you don't go with anything, go with what I'm saying, man. It's a what, sir? Criminal offense. And you will give account to God how you do or what you do with what he has given you. Because less is not expected of you. You are not expected to do less. You are not expected to live less. You are expected to live life abundantly. Everybody say life abundantly. I'm not hearing. Say life abundantly. So you have abundance life. Did you get what I've just said now? So what you have is great. And so when you read Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, let's quickly begin from that place. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It says, Now to him that is able to what? Everybody. You are sleeping this morning. You are making me missing my church this morning now. Are you responding? Will you respond to me? All right, respond to me. Let's read scripture together. E Ephesians 3, 20. Now unto him that is what? Everybody. Able to do exceedingly abundantly what everybody ab so <laughs> the word abundantly here is the same word that Jesus used that life abundantly is because the same Greek perizos and it's, it's not saying wastage, eh? it's saying extraordinary. Are you with me? What did I say, sir? extraordinary. So, pastor, this life that we have is an extraordinary life. Tell the person beside you that I am not ordinary. You are even saying it ordinarily. Glory to God. Because what we have is what, sir? Extraordinary. Listen, I'm not motivating you. I'm telling your reality. We don't motivate, but we make you see and know who you are. That's my work this morning. To let you know that as you are sitting down, you may look tiny, you may look small, but Jesus is in you. You are extra. That's why we come to church. When we come to church, what they make us to understand is who we are. I will give you pastor after my own heart. Who will feed you with what, sir? With knowledge. My knowledge. And as a result of this, there will be an increase. You don't get what I've just said now. The following verse say that because I have given you pastor that will feed you with knowledge, there is going to be an increase. I have so many things to share. Time is limited. Let me quickly tell you this. With all the grace you have, and with all the spirit in your life, if you are not established in a local church, you may not express this overflow. If you are expressing it, you may abuse it. You didn't get what I've just said. I repeat again. If you are not grounded and, you know, what pastor does is that they open your eyes to what you have and they guide you. If you are going in excess, one year away, you know, you know, when you just get some revelation, will be shocking you. Pastor will say that, you know, when we got saved, we too did it. Eh? Did you get what I've just said now? You know, there's a revelation we have that God is inside us and uh, it's not longer in heaven again. So you know, I tell people, God is not in heaven again. No. God will not say, he's here, he's there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So pastor, we cut your excesses so that you will not abuse that overflow and you will not be causing trouble outside. 
You don't understand. The church bake you, make you to have accurate expression of what God has loaded you with. What we call manifestation of the sons of God can be accurately manifested through the local church. And that's why you don't fight authority. Because if you are fighting the gift of men, the authority that God has given over you, you may not fully express that which the Lord has given unto you. I just quickly say that one. Because you need to understand that, that when we come together like this, we come so that you can see and know what you are loaded with. Are you with me now? So, no pastor is interested in hearing God for you. You don't get what I've just said. That let me go and hear. If, I'm hear, if the pastor is hearing God for everybody, every day, for 20, 35 years, the pastor will die. If the pastor is, will not die, he is raising baby believers. Because what the ministry gift is to do is to help your fellowship with God. Because in that place of fellowship, there is a knowledge you have that bats this overflow. Are you with me now? Hello, everybody. So, I'm saying so many things. I'm just trying to summarize everything this morning because I don't really have much time. And that's why it says, give me that Ephesians 3, 20 again. Quickly. Ephesians 3, 20. It says, now unto him, that unto him is unto God that is able to do what everybody exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think even before we ask he is ready to do are you with me now as we are thinking he is ready to accomplish now you have to understand that the grace you have received is not your grace the faith you have is not even your faith you see, when you want to do things by yourself, you are limiting what God can do. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When you want to be using your efforts, your, all your power to accomplish things, look at God himself has said that, leave everything to me. He says, by grace are ye saved. Through what, everybody? Faith. Through faith. And not of what, sir? Yourself. That grace is not yourself, of yourself. That faith is not of yourself. The faith in which you used to believe Jesus is not your faith. He gave it to you. Are you with me now? If he didn't give it to you, you can't believe. So he has been the one that wants to perform. Because God is a performer. You don't get what I've just said now. He has been doing this thing even before the foundation of the world. In the Old Testament, he prophesied. He says, I will. I will. I will give you a new heart. I will give you a put a new spirit. I will. Are you following what I'm saying now? He is the one that says, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. God is a doer. God is a performer. He wants to perform through you. And so when he's performing through you, that, listen to me, that's why you don't take the glory of God because you are not the one doing it. He's the one working in you to do and to will. You don't get what I've just said now. If you overcome temptation, are you the one that overcame? You didn't fall into the sin of fornication, you now come and say, hey, my try gone, my boat gone. You lady, you your more. Mugbera. Oh, Legbera. Tell me more about Bera. Are you with me? Because he's the one that will present you faultless. He got you safe, he will do the work. All you just have to do is to keep believing. What did I say, sir? And in your believing, you keep following. Because following is connecting to believing. 
you follow whosoever you believe in. You don't understand. I know my sheep. My sheep know me. He says they hear my voice. What did they do, sir? They follow. So, believing that I'm talking about is not saying, I'm trusting, I'm trusting. You are not, you are not making any effort on your own. That effort of believing is what, by that, God will be giving you instruction. Do this. Do that. And have the understanding that even what I'm asking you to do, I am the one that will work it out. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, all, you, all what you just have to do is to ready and believe. Give me that efficient again. Glory to Jesus. Yeah. Exceeding abundantly above all that we have. So, according to what, everybody, sir? According to what, sir? The power that where? Outside you? Where? The power you are looking for? Talk to me. Is it the power you are looking for? Is it the power that is on the mountain that you are looking for? Where is that power resident? Where is the residence of God's power? <laughs> I am the residential of God's power. Hey, you will be happy. I am what, sir? You are the resident pastor. What's the meaning? Ibi <laughs> Imowa. You have the resident power of God. Where is that resident power of God? You know your own. You are not the resident pastor like that, so you will soon go. You may go, you may not go. But there is probability that you will go. There is no any resident pastor that is. Forever. They transfer pastors. Abi. But the power of God in you cannot be transferred. Because who will transfer it? Except you don't know what to carry. Only transfer. God cannot transfer himself outside. Except you don't know what. So what makes it look as if there is no power there is lack of knowledge. And that's why we are feeding you with knowledge. Because knowledge gone gone there is power. Hey. And this knowledge find the expression when you apply it. So, applying knowledge is power. You don't get what I've just said now. Hello, church, are you following what I'm saying? Are we still together? Look at it. According to the power that what, everybody? That work it. Oh, according to the power that is sleeping inside us. What is power doing? What is power doing? Do you know the meaning of working? That power is functioning. I may look simple, but something is functioning in me. The barrier is here more dangerous. The back by lower more dangerous. The back here more dangerous. You don't get what I've just said now. Hello, everybody. Ah, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I say glory to Jesus. God made a public show of the power of the devil. You don't understand? By resurrection, God disgrace the power of the devil. To let you know that the devil does not have any power again. I repeat again, because some of you, they will tell you that, eh, I'm saying it again. Do you agree with me? Whatever power the devil is using against you is what you don't know. And that's why the devil is called the prince of darkness. That darkness, man, is ignorance. He's the prince of ignorance. He used your ignorance to hurt you. So, all what the devil is doing is wise. Strategy. Schemes. 
those are his power. But when we talk about power, gong, 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 that power has been conquered. You don't get what I've just said? That power has been what, sir? Money alone with this grace here. When he resurrected, when he resurrect, when Christ resurrected, sir, I was citing an example in church yesterday that it's just like a masquerade. That Glory to God. <laughs> Mommy, you are welcome. Share it be gunri. But that it regu. Ejo, when bat te kiri. Kloman pe gufu yi. Eh? Ara ye ni yo. Ki inshala oru. We used to think it's what, sir? You used to think devil has power. Now, when that ego is coming with his regalia, you know the regalia? Don't let me even call it regalia. With his rags. <laughs> rags. And over Meg Badani, and you are running. Who the in your and you are running. And listen to me. Somebody just appear. Bah. And look at him. Come here. And collected the king. And stripped him of his rags. Loba <laughs> Rudwe. Ah. Daddy, are they? <laughs> ah. So, you are. Ah. You are dangling. All those people he has beaten. What are they doing? That's how God did to the devil. When Christ resurrected, he stripped him and he showed it to you that Kosika come on, it is finished. And he says, I have given you power over him. You don't get what I've just said now. That power is inside you. So, what devil is using is ignorance. So, devil is using king. You're having, you're having AK 40. 47 and you are running. You don't get what I've just said now. Hey, devil came with King Egbala, son of Mua, not Egba Egbala. <laughs> and he came with broom. You know, when he came with broom, he came with challenges, troubles. And, has, and you are fidgeting, and you are running, and you are going to Abba List, going to, you don't know what you have or who you are. But the day you know you have AK-47 and devil knows that you now know. Ah, you don't get what I've just said now. Hello, everybody. Devil knows that you now know. He can't stay. He will go. Though he may still come back home, he will be looking for opportune time to come, but you will not give him the opportunity. That's why you guide yourself with the truth of God's word and prayer. Are we together? Yeah. You know, devil knows that you don't know what you have. That's why he is hurting. But the day he knows that you know, he can't have power over you. Look at it. You know, don't let me read this piece again. Take me to Ephesians. Hello, everybody. Okay, Ephesians 2.20 and 3.20. Oh, I don't have much time. Here. Ah, my time is up. It's like my time is up. Okay, give me the remaining minutes so that I will work with it. Now, according to the power that was uh, worked in us. Say there is a power that works in me. Now, this power function by knowledge. What did I say, sir? It's not scientific knowledge. Yo. It's not philosophy. It's not law. Is the knowledge of the word. Is knowledge of the scripture. That's why we come together to look at the scripture and our highs of understanding and what, sir? Enlightened. Thank you, sir. Enlightened. Hallelujah. When you read the preceding verse, let's read the preceding verse. 
verse 9, 19. 19. And to us, uh, to know. You can see knowing there now. is knowledge. To know the love of Christ. That was a uh, perfect knowledge. This knowledge here is not a big gnosis. It's gnosis. And that knowledge is, is, is earthly knowledge here. But there is a knowing that passes law. There is a knowing that passes biology. And this knowing is God knowing God. That's called eternal life. Are you with me now? Because eternal life is knowing God. Eternal life is not when we get to heaven. Eternal life begins here by knowing. What you are receiving here is eternal life. It's a knowing. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on knowing the Father. Are we together? So, and to know the love of Christ, which what everybody, passed knowledge that ye might be what everybody, filled with all the fullness of God. Now, you have to understand this thing. When it says, you might be filled with all the fullness of God, Colossians tells us that we are complete in him. Are you with me now? That complete is called plero. And now here, filled with the fullness of God, that fullness also is also is called blero. Is something that is filled to overbrim and is what do we call this thing now? Eh? Overflowing. Now, listen. Take me back to that place. Filled with the fullness of God. It is not that you are just going to be filled with the fullness of God. What you know, we have the expression of the fullness of God. You don't get what I've just said now. What you begin to know, there is going to be an expression of the fullness that is already there. And that's why it says in verse 18, give me verse 18 quickly. Glory to God may be able to comprehend with all saying what is the breadth and length and depth and height verse 17 that Christ may what everybody dwell in your heart by faith that ye being what now grown, uh, rooted and what grounded in love you will be rooted and grounded by what you know are you with me now you can't be rooted and grounded if there is no knowing Are you following what I'm saying now? So, what you are knowing is God that makes you to be rooted and grounded. And the expression of being rooted and grounded is the fullness of God. Ah, so many things to share about the fullness of God. Glory to God. So, sir, that fullness there is one side that there's going to be an expression of power. In that fullness, there's going to be an expression of fruit. In that fullness, there's going to be an expression of wisdom. In that full, you see, they will just be looking at you. They can't understand you because they can't define God. You are extraordinary. They will think you are coming this way, you come that way. Because you are coming with a higher wisdom, there is a fullness in which you are coming from. That nobody can comprehend. Light, darkness cannot do us that. Comprehend light. And you say, We are the light of the world. This is who you are. So Paul says that the communication of your faith may become what's that? Effectual. By the acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. That's a big gnosis. By the Precise knowledge of what, sir? Of every good thing in you, in Christ Jesus. Look at your neighbor, say, I have good thing, though. Do you want me to show it to you? <laughs> Just look at me. It's there. Hallelujah. Mommy, say, I have good thing. Daddy, say, I have good thing. Brother, say I have good thing. Your life should be an expression of that good thing. In Christ Jesus.
that's why I said, believer can only have water overflow. What unbeliever call overflow is downward flow. Because they are going downward. It takes the heights of your understanding to see it. You don't understand. And David used to envy the riches of the wicked. And he used to think, God, have you forgotten me? David now says, sir, until I got to the house of God, I know their hand. But, aha! So down what John in law this is not an overflow. We really have the overflow. We are the one who can divine overflow. Sir, your life is an example of overflow. It's a definition of overflow. Do you speak in tongues? Do you see vision? Do you have the gift of the Holy Ghost? And you say you don't have overflow. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me go. See, there is a power that works in me. Yes. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. What God is doing is from the inside. Let me, let me go. Efficient one. Right, thank you. Let me use this remaining minute to explain this. Efficient one. Efficient one. Sorry for missing Yoruba with my message. I'm a Yoruba person. Sure you get. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I will promise my church that this today I won't speak Yoruba in my message. I will speak in Greek. Before I know, I know I don't speak Yoruba. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, Ephesians 1, verse 14. Verse 13. Verse 13. Okay, let's go to verse 15. Verse 16. All right. I would like verse 15. Verse 15. Let's start with verse 15. A marker scripture. It's not me that wrote this thing, though. It's Paul that wrote it, too. He says, Wherefore, I also. That word, wherefore, means he has been saying some things before. Today is not the day of knowing what he has said before. But let's look at what he's saying now. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. Verse 15. He says, Cease not. To give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayer. You will know the prayer of Paul for these people. Verse 17, right? This is the prayer. Let me tell you, sir. If you pray this prayer for three months consistently, something will happen in your life. Are you with me, sir? This prayer I'm talking about, not only him, everybody. If you can be praying this prayer consistently for what, sir? For three months. Something must happen. Because this, hey, glory to Jesus. Look at this. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of what, sir? Of glory. You know, when he says the Father of glory, he's saying that he has given you a kind of glory that is fathering. Hmm? Is a father of glory. Christ in you. I'm not hearing you. Christ in you. Through that Christ, you become the son of God. A son of God is glorious. And there is a father in heaven. That father, that glory. He says, the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of what, wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of of him knowledge knowing god fellowship with god in the place of fellowship you get knowledge and he says that eyes of your what everybody understanding being enlightened that what again what again ye may know yes sir when we come to church we come to know are you with me so we come to know. He says that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saint. Verse 19. And what, everybody? You are now sleeping now. At this point, you are sleeping. And what now? 
exceeding great. I told you that what God is doing is overflow. Is excess. And that excess is not wastage. And look at it. It says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? And the word exceeding greatness is called in Greek, upa balu. You did get that now. Even that Greek word, I like it. Upa balu. Have you seen balu before? Balu. When they blow balu, it was a, uh, it expands. Greek call it upa balu. And it means that this exceeding greatness of his power, when you target it, when you target one, you can use one to catch seven. You don't get what I've just said now. You don't understand. That's why at times when you pray one prayer, you see God answering another, other, 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 other ones. Even the one you didn't pray is as a result of the exceeding greatness of his power. You don't get what I've just said. Look at me. It is, it is wife you are praying for. That God, just show me my, my way, your way. Just show it to me. Just show it to me. God will not only show it to you. Hmm? You will get married. You will have children. You will build house. You will have car. All that benefit that you will enjoy that marriage, God gives it to you. He does not answer one for you. He answers many. Because even he knows what you need before you ask. That's why he says he can do exceedingly above all. It's as a result of this exceeding greatness of what, sir? Of his power. And this exceeding greatness of his power, sir, is not outside. He is toward who believe. Who are the ones that believe? Believer. Are we together? He is toward believers who have believed the gospel. So there is exceeding greatness of his power. Now stand up, everybody. Let me show you, let me show you something. I've closed Exceeding greatness of his power, sir. Sir, I draw my pipe. I want to use an example. So, brother, stay there. Stay there, stay there. This brother got born again. Are you with me now? He got born again. Immediately got born again. Now, let me explain the exceeding greatness of his power just like this. It can, this thing cannot even describe it. But let's use our woman brain to describe it. And this exceeding greatness power, sir, is coming like this towards you. Coming towards you. And when it's about to get to you, it now come like this. Come like this. Come like this. Come like this. And enter you. And from that day, you cease to be extra, to be ordinary. And you become worse, sir. Extraordinary and ordinary. That greatness now is now here. Compressed inside you. And that's, look at it. That's why there are many mansions inside this place. You don't get what I've just said now. So you can operate from any dimension you want as you are growing up. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So there is an aspect of God that shows love. There is an aspect of God that shows vengeance. There is an aspect of God. Let me tell you. There is an aspect of God that key. Or you don't know. Ah, there is an aspect of God that key. There is an a when God kill, he doesn't murder. <laughs> what did I say, sir? When he kill, he doesn't murder. He kill injustice. If anything wants to hinder his plan, he takes it away. What is that? He kills. Are you with me now? So there is an exceeding greatness of the power towards you now. So what you need to do is to know and believe. And that's why Jude says that building up yourself in your most words are holy faith. Speaking in the Holy Ghost. Can we speak in the Holy Ghost now to tap into what is inside us and draw from the greatness of the power of God that is inside us to settle things that may be bothering us? Please, please pray, pray, pray the prayer briefly. Pray the prayer briefly. Greatness of His power. 
I'm not ordinary. I'm not ordinary. Greatness of his power. <laughs> Can you target one thing this week and have so many things that will come and you have testimony? Just one second. In Jesus' name we pray. I do not have to pray for 10, 5 minutes before something happens. I will just send forth a word now. As you say resounding amen, you see their result. I say you see their result. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Open the eyes of understanding of your children. Yeah. That they may know the exceeding greatness of the power of God inside them. And as from today, there is an expression of this power. Amen. There's an expression of this grace. Amen. There's an expression of overflow. Amen. Thank you for the answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray.